ಸುಮುಖ ಕಲಯಾ ಕಲೇಶ ಇಕ್ಷ್ವಾಕುವಂಶ ಅವತೀರ್ಯ ಗುರೋರ್ ನಿದೇಶೆ ತಿಷ್ಟನ್ ವನಂ ಸದ ಇತಾನುಜ ಆ ವಿವೇಶ ಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ ವಿರುದ್ಧ ದಶಕಂದರ ಮಾರ್ತಿ ಮಾರ್ಚತ್ ವಂದೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದೋ ಸಹೋದಿತೋ ಗೌಡೋ ದೇ ಪುಷ್ಪವಂತೋ ಚಿತ್ರೋ ಸಂಧೋ ತಮೋನುದೋ ಆಜ ಆಜಾನುಲಂಬಿತ ಭುಜೋ ಕನಕಾವಧಾತೌ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನೈ ಕಪಿತರೌ ಕಮಲಾಯದಾಕ್ಷೋ ವಿಶ್ವಂಬರೋ ದ್ವಿಜೋರೋ ಜುಗಧರ್ಮ ಪಾಲೋ ವಂದೇ ಜಗತ್ ಪ್ರಿಯಕರೋ ಕರುಣಾವತಾರೋ ವಂದೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಮಂದೇ ಬಾಲೋಪಿಯತ್ತದ್ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ತರೇ ನಾನಾ ಮತಗ್ರಹ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತಂ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ಸಾಗರಂ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಮೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ್ಯ ದೇವಾಯ ರಾಮಾಯ ಕುಂಠಮೇಧಸೆ ಉತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ದುರ್ಯಾಯ ನ್ಯಸ್ತಂಡಾರ್ಪಿತಾಂಘ್ರಯೇ ಸೊ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಅವರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ನೆಕ್ಟೇರಿಯನ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ರಾಮಾಯಣ um as learned by shri ramanuj acharya from his guru shailapurna this must have been when did ramanuj acharya appear 1000 years ago over some over 1000 years ago and um then um presented by um his follower um shri govind raja and uh, made accessible to us by his grace vidwan goranga prabhu so um summarizing what we have learned so far we are currently in section 3 means we are in the third cardinal teaching of the ramayan so the first cardinal teaching of the ramayan is that vishnu is supreme personality of godhead and is non different from shri ramachandra and um is the creator of the entire universe is the only one who is worthy to be worshiped and is the only real master of all the worlds and universes and all the living entities both in the material and spiritual worlds so that supreme personality of godhead is attained by the means of surrender and this surrender is achieved in by so one so the, there are multiple aspects of that surrender but the main the second teaching is primarily the point that to attain that supreme personality of god at one must surrender unto him that is the um, crux of the second um, teaching um, it is the second teaching so within that we saw multiple things that the supreme personality of god it becomes very happy he becomes magnificent he becomes um, bright and shining when and and displays all his weapons when a devotee appears to him for, sorry appears in front of him and surrenders to him um to that supreme personality of godhead the um the supreme personality of godhead becomes very pleased with such a devotee um we also saw that it is a duty of someone who has been approached for surrender it, the highest dharma is for them to award protection so if that is the highest dharma for a normal living entity what to speak of supreme personality god when somebody approaches him he will protect and such protection um through the process of surrender also yields the um desired result of the of the uh, devotee who is offering that surrender as long as he surrenders unto a competent authority who is not only competent but also compassionate so supreme personality of god it is like that um what else did we see um and then um you know we saw that um okay we'll go one by one so we saw that to approach the supreme lord for surrender one has to submit to his consort one has to um move through via his consort uh, the, the um because the consort what does she do she negotiate she pleads on behalf of the conditioned soul 
then um, we also saw that even if the living entity has a desire that might not be practical to be achieved at that very moment, still his surrender will not go in vain. The Supreme Personality of Godhead will refine his desire in accordance to that which is good for that living entity and also fulfills the Lord's purpose. So this we see in the example of Bharata. Um, then we saw that uh, Supreme Personality of Godhead just considers that even those who live within his territory, they are considered to be surrendered. And Supreme Personality of Godhead approaches them of his own accord. Doesn't wait for them to approach, just because they are living in the temple. Meaning that devotees who are surrendered to the Supreme Lord, they need not approach the Lord for their needs. The Supreme Lord himself knows the needs of the devotee and takes care of those needs. So this is the point there. And then we saw that even if one is offensive and very, um, you know, acts in an acts in a inimical manner towards even someone as great as the Lord's consort, as long as they come back and they come and, and they repent, sincerely repent and offer full obeisances like the crow Jayanta, they are also protected and they are also considered surrendered. And then... Um, Valmiki Ramayana also uh, Valmiki Ramayana also says that um, to to surrender unto the supreme personality of Godhead, one must become favorably disposed towards Him. You cannot become inimical. You cannot be inimical and make a show, but you have to become favorably disposed to the supreme personality of Godhead, and you have to establish friendship. So, um, what is that verse in Bhagavad Gita? Um, um, yeah, what is it? Is it? Suhridam sarva bhutanam, nyatva maam shanti mrichati. So one can attain peace only when one establishes that intimate friendship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That's a very, very important facet of surrender. So then Valmiki points out that um, before surrendering to the Supreme Lord, one should give up the association of everyone who opposes such surrender. That you have to give up, just like Vibhishana gave up. And then, um, the, in the example of Rama surrendering to the ocean, what do we see? We see that if one surrenders unto somebody who is not competent, who is inferior, then the surrender does not yield any results. It does not yield the, the, the required result, nor does one get protection. And we see that also in the case of, what else, what is, what is the other example that we saw in that? Rambha and Indra. Indra... Um, and Kamadev offering protection to Ramba, but then, you know, Ramba still gets cursed by, by um, Vishwamitra, and uh, Indra and Kamadev just flee from the scene. So, um, we also saw how, in the example of Trijata, somebody who is affectionate and favorably disposed towards a devotee, a surrendered soul of the Supreme Lord, even though they may have no intention of directly surrendering, simply by associating with that particular devotee and be becoming favorably disposed towards them, they gain that devotee's affection, they gain that devotee's attention, and through this, they are also surrendered souls, and they also become protected by the Supreme Lord. And we see that what to speak of those people, even fr people who are friendly to that person, they also get protected, just like the other Rakshasis, they just happened to listen. They cooperated with Trijata's desire to serve Sita. They directly had no intention of serving Sita. But they cooperated with Trijata's desire and therefore they were also protected by, by, by Lord Rama. Um, and then um, we saw that um, when Vibhishana surrendered, we saw how um, the Supreme Lord protects all of the relatives of, of, of a surrendered soul as well, and friends, and you know, like that. And um, um, so that, that concludes section two. And in section three, um, we are seeing the purpose of surrendering to the Supreme Lord. What is the real purpose? So this is the third teaching of the Ramayana. The third teaching of the Ramayana is that the real purpose of surrendering to the Supreme Lord is to achieve exclusive, unalloyed, unmotivated devotional service unto him, uninterrupted devotional service unto him. So, we see that the, uh, when, when the demigods surrendered to the Supreme Lord through the agency of Lord Brahma, they were ultimately engaged in, in the Supreme Lord's service. 
And the killing of Ravana, for which they actually approached the Supreme Lord, was simply a side result. So through this example, we see that Supreme Lord, when anybody surrenders unto, unto, unto him, he tricks them through his agents and his devotees into becoming his devotees and actually giving them devotional service. So we see that in the process of surrender. And um, we also see that um, when uh, through the example of Lakshmana, that devotional service has to be performed Avyabhicharini, not, that's not the point that we discussed with Lakshman. Huh? Not limited to time, place and circumstances. That devotional service should not be limited to time, place, circumstances. Rather that the devotee's uninterrupted devotional service means that it has to transcend all time, all places, all circumstances. That the devotee should be willing to do that. And that is called um, surrender. Okay. So, um, now, point number three, under the third teaching of the uh, Ramayana. It is for the sake of attaining such devotional service to Rama that Bharata also prayed to him to return to Ayodhya and be coronated as his ruler. By rendering devotional service to Lord Rama's sandals, Bharata attained his cherished desires to serve Lord Rama. So, we already saw this. We saw the section as to how... How Bharata served Lord Rama and how he served his sandals. Why? Because Lord Rama's sandals became empowered. It became empowered. Why? Because Rama accepted it. He accepted, yes, these sandals. And Bharata, of course, Bharata had the idea. And Bharata produces these sandals and he requests Rama, let these sandals rule Ayodhya on your behalf. I will coronate these sandals. You see, Bharata's um, you know, Dharma Sankata is actually a real one. It's, he, he doesn't, he needs to rule the kingdom on behalf of Lord Rama. And Rama has to accept that he can rule the kingdom on his behalf. But on his behalf means who's the real ruler? Lord Rama. Now Rama is not accepting to rule the kingdom. Now, so far he was like, Bharata, you rule, you rule, you rule. You rule, it's okay. But Bharata cannot accept that. Now, if someone has to do something on someone's behalf, then that person on whose behalf something is being done, that person needs to have a post. They need to have a position. And if that position is not taken, how can you do it on their behalf? If you all have heard of the power of attorney. So, what's power of attorney? You, you give a person full permission or whatever level of permission you want to give them, to execute things on your behalf. When one produces a power of attorney, in, from a legal standpoint, it is as good as that person being there. Because depending on what's being granted, the, the rights that have been granted, you can even grant it to the extent that a person can completely decide. Like for instance, people can grant power of attorneys to um, their their wealth, their property, their, you know, whatever they have. And after their death, that person carrying the power of attorney has the full discretion under law to do whatever he thinks or whatever he wants to do with that, um, you know, wealth or whatever, if that's what the power of attorney says. If the power of attorney says, you know, this particular person can do whatever he wants with my wealth, he can even write it to his dog. Then that person is considered, it's, you know that, but to give that, one has to first accept that one has a position, one has a post. So now, what is Bharata? What is the problem with Bharata's? What is the problem that Bharata is facing? Rama has not accepted that he is the ruler of Ayodhya. He is not accepting. He is flat out refusing. And so then, so then, you know, finally Bharata produces these sandals. And why does he produce these sandals? Because Rama needs to be coronated as the ruler of Ayodhya for Bharata to rule on his behalf. Now Rama is in the forest. So how can, 
how can Bharata rule on his behalf? Something has to be done. Some kind of formal thing has to be done for Rama to be recognized as a ruler. Otherwise, how can Bharata rule on his behalf? It will just seem like some show. And Bharata doesn't want to do any official ceremony for himself because he doesn't want to be the ruler. So he produces these sandals and these sandals become empowered. The Supreme Lord empowers them. Lord Rama empowers those sandals. And those sandals are then coronated. And then it is seen that, you know, Bharata is holding an umbrella. Many times he's seen to be holding an umbrella over, over Lord Rama's shoes. Why would you hold umbrella over some shoes? A shoe doesn't need an umbrella. But that's because Lord Bharata saw those shoes as non-different from the Supreme Lord. From this you can also understand that all the paraphernalia of the Supreme Lord is non-different to him. Because they're all absolute. Prabhupada says this, right? All of, because for us, there is a difference between the objects that we own, the objects that we possess, and ourselves. But the Supreme Lord, He is absolute, He is transcendental. And therefore, any of His possessions, any of the things that He has, is as good as Himself. They are as good as representing Himself as Himself. Therefore, for instance, you know, sometimes we see the chakra on the on the on the on the on top of the temple and it is said that this is equal to seeing lord jagannath because it is it is one of jagannath's paraphernalia and all these you will see traditionally there are many of these paraphernalias are worshipped just by themselves the paraphernalia is worshipped because they are all absolute on the spiritual platform everything is absolute and Krishna and Krishna Prashadam is non different. Krishna Prashadam is what he has given us. But that Krishna Prashadam is Anna Brahma. It is non different from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, we say honoring Prashadam. Honoring Prashadam because we are honoring that Prashadam by consuming it. It is that, that's how that Prashadam is being respected. Why it has to be respected? Because it is non different from the Supreme Lord. And so Supreme Lord's Padukas, his shoes, they are also non different to him. And Bharata had that vision and his desire to serve Lord Rama became fulfilled simply by serving those Padukas. So anyways, the point is that um, Bharata also rendered devotional service unto the Supreme Lord by performing surrender. Okay, regarding the surrender of the residents of the Dandaka forest unto Sri Ramachandra, it is stated... Tetam somam ivodhyantam drishtva dharmacharinaha Lakshmanam chaiva drishtva tu vaidehim cha yashasvinim Mangalani prayunjana pratyagrihnan dhridha vrataha Upon seeing him who resembled the rising moon and upon seeing Lakshmana and the famous vaidehi, those performers of dharma, Firmly fixed in their vows, invoked auspiciousness through speech while receiving them very well into their ashram. From this it is understood that by surrendering unto Lord Rama, those residents of Dandakaranya, they achieved the result of devotional service um, unto him, rendered through speech and so on. So, um, let me see if I have this. I think I pulled this up. So, let's see. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Thereafter, the assembled rishis approached Rama and petitioned. Many of those who live in this forest are being mercilessly killed by Rakshasas. You may come and see the dead bodies that are lying about here and there. O Rama, we humbly request you that you give us protection. Um, Rama assured the Rishis, As a Kshatriya, I am your servant. Thus for your sake, I will kill all the Rakshasas. Accompanied by the sages, Rama proceeded to the ashram of Sutikshna. After receiving Rama's obeisances, the Rishi said, I have been awaiting your visit, O descendant of the dynasty of Raghu, before ascending to Brahma Loka. King Indra came here and informed me of your imminent arrival. When Rama asked the Rishi to designate a place for him to reside, the Rishi offered him the use of his own cottage. Rama refused, however, saying, If we were to remain here by killing the deer, we would become the cause of your unhappiness. 
Rama, Sita and Lakshmana spent the night at Sutikshana's ashram. The next morning Rama took leave, bowing before the great sage, bowing down before the great sage. Sutikshana embraced Rama, inviting him to return to his ashram after visiting different hermitages in the Dandakaranya forest. Um, one second, let me see. Okay. Rama, Sita, Lakshmana um, went on wandering from ashram to ashram within the Dandakaranya forest. They would stay at each hermitage for a week, a month or, or longer, sometimes even a year. In this way, ten years of Rama's exile passed comfortably and content, contently, contentedly. After this time, the three wanderers res, returned to the hermitage of Sutikshana to reside. So, in this way, um, one can see that for 10 years of Lord Rama's life, actually, you know, we don't realize, but Lord Ramachandra spent a long time in the forest. You know, the, the, the impression is like, oh, he went to the forest and then, you know, very soon after Sita got kidnapped and then the battle happened and like that. No, but actually, 10 years Lord Ramachandra spent in the forest of Dandakaranya. And what was he doing? It said here, he was going from... Hermitage to hermitage, from ashram to ashram. And what was he doing there? He would stay in some ashrams, he would stay in some hermitage for a week, a month or longer, sometimes even a year. In this way, ten years passed. So what happens is, therefore it's said here, that although the, the sages of Dandakarana, they approached Rama. Oh, you know, see all the dead bodies of the Rakshasas, you know, we are suffering here. But what did they get? They got Lama, Rama's association and by gaining Rama's association, they performed service to him. They performed service to him for 10 full years as Lord Rama, Sita and Lakshmana wander from you know, hermitage to hermitage. So many of these pastimes are there. Therefore, the Mula Ramayana, which um, um, uh, um, Madhvacharya speaks about, he refers to a version of called as the Mula Ramayana, consists of one million verses or something like this. Some, some, some amazing number. I think it's one million. One million verses is, is, the, is the Mula Ramayana, of which we have 24,000. We have 24,000 verses. This is the Ramayana that we have. But there's one million. So many pastimes. So many pastimes would have happened in those 10 years. 10 years? It's a long time. You know, and the point here is that the residents of Dandakaranya, they achieved the result of devotional service unto him, rendered through speech and so on. So they speak nice words to him, they give them their, their ashram to reside in, they probably brought them fruits and roots and other things like this, etc., etc., etc. So again, point, of, point, point is, the point of surrender results in devotional service. This is another example. Okay. 5. When Sugriva, Vibhishana and others surrender unto Lord Rama, it is clear from statements such as the following that the primary result of such surrender was the attainment of devotional service and the other results of such surrender was merely incidental. Atahari Vara Nathaf Okay, what's the meter? There's no meter. Huh? Really? Oh, that's going to be hard. Oh, that's right. Atahari varanatav prapya sangrama kirtim nishicharapati majau yoja yitva ashramena. Okay, sorry. I'm mixing. <coughs> Gaganam ati ati vi. Gaganam ati vi vishalam langhaitvar kashunur. Harivara Gana Madhye Rama Parshwam Jagama. Having thus laboriously gouged the master of the night rangers in, in battle, Sugriva, the lord of the excellent monkeys, and Surya's son attained fame in battle and then jumped onto the very extensive sky and approached Rama in the midst of the excellent monkeys. So, um, so uh, let me go on. Um, <clears throat> with one Gauranga Prabhu comments. As noted in Canto 6, Chapter 40, before Lord Rama began to attack Ravana, he inspected Ravana's 
palace and other parts of Lanka from a distance along with Sugriva and they saw Ravana in his palace. Without speaking a word to Rama, Sugriva immediately jumped up onto, uh, on, onto the sky and landed at Ravana's palace and fought with him one on one for quite some time. When Ravana began to use mystic powers, Sugriva, considering that he, if he also uses his mystic powers, Sri Ramachandra would become unhappy with him and so jumped back to join Rama. This incident is evidence that Sugriva was not helping Rama merely out of the official dharmika bond of friendship that they had forged in Kishkinda early, earlier on. He was factually interested in rendering selfless devotional service unto Lord Rama. So, um, that's a very nice um, pastime. Um, okay. So, what's happening here is that um, mm, okay. While gazing at the city and feeling great appreciation for its magnificence, Rama, sighted Ravana, perched atop the northern gate with a canopy held over his head, being fanned by his servants. Sugriva ordered numerous monkeys ahead, jumping from mountain top to mountain top to occupy the outer gardens of Lanka. Suddenly, he too sighted Ravana. Thus, Sugriva impetuously le leapt from the peak of Mount Suvela to where the Rakshasa king was sitting atop the northern gate. Gazing at Ravana with great disdain, Sugriva announced, I am servant of Lord Rama and I shall kill you this very day. Sugriva pounced on Ravana, knocking his, knocking his crown off in the process. The surprised Rakshasa king then grabbed Sugriva and while uttering similar threats, threw Sugriva to the ground. Sugriva, however, bounced up immediately like a rubber ball and in turn braced Ravana, throwing him to the ground with great force. A fierce wrestling match ensued, ensued and as the two heroes scratched each other with their nails, covering them bo both with blood and perspiration. After striking each other with their fists and arms and wrestling for a long time, Sugriva and Ravana both fell down from the gate onto the ground in the area between the boundary wall and the moat. So they literally fell down from the, from the top of the of of the of the you know castle walls and the gate. Um, and then, then jumping to their feet, the two kings continued fighting, exhibiting all their knowledge in the art of wrestling. At last, when Ravana realized that he could not defeat Sugriva with mere physical strength, he called upon his mystic powers. Understanding this, Sugriva decided to abandon the fight. He bounded into the air and immediately returned to where Rama was staying. Sugriva was now feeling blissful at having performed such a heroic feat and his followers responded by jumping excitedly. Embracing Sugriva in love, Rama mildly chastised him saying, You have acted foolishly for you dared to do something without my sanction. Besides this, a king should never take such risks because the death of the ruler is a great calamity for the entire nation. O Sugriva, if Ravana had killed you, then certainly I would have slain him in retaliation. Then after installing Vibhishana upon the throne at Lanka and Bharata on the throne of Ayodhya, I would have given up my own life for having allowed you to be killed in my presence. Sugriva replied, after seeing that rascal Ravana, the abductor of Sita, I could not bear to simply ignore him. Rama said, Regardless, you courageously displayed your heroism and all the monkey soldiers have been inspired by your fearless example. So, it's such an amazing, I mean, pastime. It's like, I, it's one of those pastimes that I remember so fondly in the Ramayana is, is, is how here Sugriva exhibits the spontaneous love which from an, as Lord Rama is analyzing it, from from a, from a from a logical perspective, it was a foolish thing to do because Lord Rama is saying that Sugriva, you are the leader, you are the king. Imagine if the king dies before the battle even begins, how would the soldiers feel? And forget about the soldiers. What happens to your country? What happens to your nation? You know who's going to take care of all that? You know, and and so you shouldn't do this. You know, you shouldn't you 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 shouldn't. Um, you know, do that. And besides, you didn't do it with my permission. Why does Sugriva have to take permission from Lord Rama? Because even though, also anybody can explain. Any, isn't Sugriva a friend? Didn't they establish a pact of mutual friendship? He's a king. Rama is also a king. 
Yeah, that, that, that in, in, Lord, in Lord Rama's pastimes, everybody is a servant of Lord Rama. You know, even Dasharatha would consider himself like that. You know, although, of course, it would be imbued with that affection. So, in Lord Ramachandra's pastimes, and the mood of Dasya is so prominent, it's predominant, actually. Um, <clears throat> and because of this, um, you know, Ramayana, um, Lord Ramachandra, worship of Lord, Lord Ramachandra is very dear to the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya. It's because it, 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 it uh, glorifies Dasya while at the same time, you know, exhibiting symptoms of Vatsalya, exhibiting symptoms of Sakya, even conjugal love as far as Sita goes. You know, it's all in that mood. So here, even though Sugriva and Lord Rama are friends, they are actually, from a dharmic point of view, they established a pact of friendship as equals. Because it's, it's, it's like a treaty that they established. That, you know, so they are friends. But still, Sugriva had to seek Rama's permission because from a perspective of devotional service, he is a devotee of the Supreme Lord and his servant. So here, he acted without his permission. You know, so in one sense, that was a bit of a transgression. But he did it out of spontaneous love. He did it out of spontaneous love and his act actually pleased the Supreme Lord because he showed that Supreme Love and, and therefore Sugriva was feeling blissful. He feeling, yeah, you know, I showed that guy and I gave him a, a taste of, you know, um, of what it means to be, you know, against, up against Rama's servant, you know, uh, let him, let him, let him see. If, 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 if me, uh, you know, who's, who's simply a servant of Lord Rama is so powerful, what is Lord Rama going to do to you? And put the fear of God in your heart, you know. That's what actually Sugriva managed to achieve. Because Ravana did not expect, he did not expect some monkey to jump up him. And for Ravana, for Ravana, for some monkey to jump up at Ravana, what an insult. What an insult. One who dragged Indra, you know, and threw Indra at his feet. One who made all the demigods come before him as, 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 as indentured servants like Shudras in front of him. Such an exalted personality who is, who is, who is, who is, who is the grandson, you know, great grandson of Lord Brahma himself. Ravana is the great grandson of Brahma himself. You know, such a personality, a monkey, a monkey, some monkey, monkey king, what? King of monkeys, king of monkeys, still a monkey, you know, comes and jumps at him. And and, 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 and and what's worse, he doesn't have the physical strength to attack him. He doesn't have the, he has to start exhibiting mystical powers. You know, he couldn't, he couldn't beat this monkey. And already he has seen with Hanuman, but he didn't really like, you know, seem to register. Because Hanuman didn't directly fight with Ravana. Ravana, he thought, no, words, I'll not fight with this Hanuman. You know, he, although Hanuman would have liked to fight with Ravana. But Ravana, he didn't fight with Hanuman because it was too low for him. It was like, you know, below his dignity. But here Sugriva forces Ravana to fight at a moment that he didn't expect it at all. So, <clears throat> from this we see that Sugriva was a real devotee of the Supreme Lord. And although initially his motivation to accept Lord Rama was so that he could regain the kingdom, be protected from Vali and have Vali slain, Still, actually, he's a devotee of the Supreme Lord. So this is, again, um, the, uh, the glory of the form, of the process of surrender, that it purifies, purifies one. It, you know, this is what, again and again, same, different, different examples are being given. Okay. Parityakta maya lanka mitra nichadana nicha bhavad, bhavad gatam me raj bhavad gatam me rajyam cha jivitam cha sukhani cha after Vibhishana abandoned Ravana, he surrendered unto Lord Rama and confided as follows, I have abandoned Lanka, my friends and wealth. I place my kingdom, life and happiness at your disposal. Commentary. The second sentence here is evidence that Vibhishana isn't merely surrendering to, Lord, to Rama for safety from Ravana. He wanted to serve Lord Rama exclusively and fully. Why did he want to do so? 
It is because he understood the position of Lord Rama as the supreme personality of God and Narayana, the eternal compassionate shelter of all living entities in the universe. Therefore, he tried to make Ravana understand that he should give Sita Devi back to Ramachandra. But Ravana rejected him and so Vibhishana took shelter of, Rama, of Lord Rama fully, something he always wanted to do. Vibhishana is recognized in Srimad Bhagavatam as a spiritually enlightened devotee of the Supreme Lord. In, this is Canto 2, chapter 7, text 43 to 45. And as one who attains spiritual perfection due to spiritual association. 11, Canto 11, chapter 12, verses 3 to 6. Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur notes that Vibhishana had associated with Hanuman and thus became pure-hearted in order to surrender to Lam, unto Lama Chandra purely. Isn't this amazing? See, if our Acharyas didn't say this, you would never know. How did, how did Vibhishana want to learn the glories of Lord Rama? Because he learned it from Hanuman. He must have learned it when Hanuman came to Lanka. He was like, oh, he sees Hanuman. He sees the prowess of Hanuman. He sees all this. And again, just see, just see the glory of being favorably disposed towards a devotee. That Vibhishana, although he is fully in bad association, forget about bad association, he is the brother of Ravana. Now, if he is the brother of Ravana, is it, is it, is it not likely possible? I mean, I have not read the Puranas, but it would be most likely or almost 100% certain that he helped Ravana conquer the demigods. He must have been one of the chief persons fighting against the demigods. Right? I mean, he's not a normal person. He's one of Ravana's ministers. He's in the royal court. He's able to stand up and speak to Ravana like this. You can't be some, 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 some useless fellow. You know, you had to be some... So, he, he, so not only was he Ravana's, uh, you know, was he Ravana's, uh, you know, younger brother... He, and not only was he surrounded by bad association, he was cohorts. You know, he, 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 he collaborated with Ravana in performing all of Ravana's nefarious activities and torturing the demigods. Such a person, because of being favorably disposed to such a devotee as Hanuman, was able to gain the shelter of Lord Rama. That's, this is the point. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Koi, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. Sarva Siddhi, what is Sarva Siddhi? Sarva Siddhi means to attain? Huh? What is the perfection we all seek to achieve? Krishna conscious, love of Godhead. Right? Yubhishana achieved that. He didn't surrender unto Lord Rama just because Ravana rejected him. He surrendered unto Lord Rama because he wanted to serve him. And he always wanted to do that. After seeing Hanuman and after associating with Hanuman, he felt, who, who is this Ramana? Who is the rascal who thinks he is the ruler of the entire universe? He is not the ruler of the entire universe. Why am I surrendered to this person? So first what he does, he tries to make Ravana surrender unto Lord Rama also. But Ravana doesn't listen. Difference again, Trijata and her associates. Vibhishana and Ravana. What Trijata is doing to the other... Um, um, Rakshasis is what Vibhishana is also doing to Ravana. Two very different results. Why? Because those Rakshasis listened to Trijata, but Ravana did not listen to Vibhishana. So Trijata therefore did not give up the association of those Rakshasis. Why? Because they listened to her. They also became favorably disposed towards Sita Devi. There was no need to give up that association. Ravana refused to become favorable towards Lord Rama. Vibhishana gave up that association. So, so many things we can see from here. Ha ha, Vishwan Chakriti Thakur ki jai. Anyways, you never know this without our Acharya's mercy. Okay. Similarly, when Jayanta, the son of Indra, in the form of a crow, surrendered unto Rama, begging for forgiveness for his offense of biting Sita Devi and his life, Rama granted him his life. Thus the crow's surrender unto, Lord Ra unto Rama yielded the des his desired result. If Rama did not want to kill that crow, why did he discharge the Brahmastra weapon on him? Ramachandra discharged the Brahmastra on the crow in order to subdue him. He did this out of compassion, anugraha, upon the crow in order to discipline him so that such evil behavior does not reoccur on his part due to his offensive propensities. So from here you understand... 
what so how is this how is this point connected with the point that ultimately surrender leads to devotional service how is this um, story of lord ramachandra punishing the crow after he achieved surrender after he surrendered unto lord rama and rama assured him protection still lord rama discharged the brahmastra weapon and chastised this crow by taking out one of his eyes right by um, you know how what 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 how does that relate to this point of of th that surrender ultimately leads to devotional service ha huh? No. Because you know he's, he's chastising the, the the bird. Okay. You know, for the mistake that he's done, and then in giving him a small reaction instead of a big reaction, and after that, you know, the, the crow will always. Yeah, but what is the purpose of giving that? How does that perp? How does that re giving that reaction relate to the point of di devotion? Uh, I mean, sorry, surrender leads to unmotivated, unalloyed devotional service. It is to correct those offenses. it is to correct that offensive behavior that the supreme lord it is not that when one surrenders if if you know one if one was very offensive in the past one should not think that i will surrender and there will be no reaction at all in fact one should expect reaction now by mercy supreme person they got it may not give reaction but one should expect reaction for one's offenses because supreme lord that's his mercy anugraha so that when we get that reaction we we because of suffering we will not do again we suffer we suffer because of that reaction we suffer intensely and that intense suffering leaves an impression upon us and then when we think of that and when 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 an offensive mentality comes we think of the suffering we have gone through and then we immediately step away so this prevents us from having an offensive mentality which automatically creates a favorable mentality towards devotional service and that favorable mentality leads to unmotivated unalloyed devotional service without offenses because one has to be free from offenses to um perform devotional service um in an unalloyed and unmotivated way so this offensive propensities have to get removed and so supreme this is not the only place that uh, this example is given there is another place also actually uh, yeah so um questions after this um okay mm. so point number 7 this is similar what is similar the uh, um lord ramachandra discharging the brahmastra on the crow jayanta is similar to lord rama to lord, to rama's discharging an arrow using vishnu's bow at parashurama he did this only to remove his unsubmissive attitude toward towards rama and so he discharged it at at the pious credits accumulated by parashurama that were unfavorable to the attainment of his liberation as chosen by parashurama himself this incident is described in canto 1 chapter 76 commentary after rama and his brothers married sita and her sisters respectively dasharatha and the entire family and antaraj departed from mithila to ayodhya while on the path while seeing in various inauspicious omens dasharatha became distressed in the mean in the meanwhile lord parashurama appeared from another forest dasharatha became frightened upon seeing him but vashishta and others pacified him quickly they brought argya and other items of worship and worshiped him discarding dasharatha's prayer parashurama informed rama the son of dasharatha of the history of the bows of lord shiva and lord vishnu he then gave him lord vishnu's bow to test his strength and requested him to bend and string it rama took the bow stretched it fixed an arrow on it and asked parashurama where he should shoot the arrow which which necessarily requires to be released once it has been fixed on the bow for shooting parashurama told him that he can shoot the arrow at the world's earned by his pious activities lord ramachandra um did as told then in the presence of the demigods and other celestials the son of jamadagni asserted that lord rama is none other than lord narayana himself and departed for the mahendra mountain so um this past time um is uh yeah this found in the balakanda
Okay. <clears throat> so there are um, inauspicious omens. And while Maharaj Dasharatha and his priests were discuss thus discussing the matter, a fierce wind began blowing, shaking the very earth and knocking down many tall trees. Dust rose up and began to cover everything from all directions. It became so dark that nearly everyone except Maharaj Dasharatha, his sons and Vashishta and the other rishis became bewildered and panic-stricken. Suddenly the famous and terrible warrior Parashurama appeared with his matted hair an axe on his right shoulder, a bow on his left, and a powerful arrow in his hands. The rishis were surprised to see Parashurama in this ferocious aspect, since previously, after annihilating the Kshatriya community 21 times, he had vowed to give up his anger and remained fixed in the execution of austerities. As the rishis were wondering why he had again be become moved to anger, the son of Jama Dagni addressed Lord Rama as follows. You have certainly performed a heroic feat by breaking the bow of Lord Shiva. However, I am carrying an even greater bow, that of Lord Vishnu. If you consider yourself a great hero, then take this bow and string it. If you are able to draw the arrow back to its full length, then I shall consider you a fit person to fight with. Hearing Parashurama's challenge, Maharaj Dasharatha became overwhelmed with grief and afraid to lose, lose his beloved son. With a trembling voice, the king pleaded, O best of the rishis, Parashurama, please desist from your aggressive spirit. I beg, beg to remind you of your vow to give up fighting. After handing over the earth to Kashyapa, you retired to Mount Mahendra to perform austerities. Actually, in the summary, um, just before this, by a disciple of, of, of Madhvacharya, um, I forget his name, um, Narayana Bhatta. Um, there is a summary given before every canto. And so in the summary of this canto, one of the things that uh, Narayana Bhatta mentions is that Dasharatha also pleads, he said, I am an old man and after so many years, you know, I am finally having a son, uh, four sons. These sons are my very life. Can you please grant me? Please, O oh Rishi, please, please leave these sons. If you want, you fight me. If you want to kill someone, you kill me. But leave these sons. You know, he, he pleads like this. It's, it's very, very, it's amazing to read that. You know, but what does Parashurama do? He simply ignores him. He doesn't even reply. He doesn't even reply. Parashurama, however, ignored Dasharatha and continued to address Rama, saying, Both Lord Vishnu, uh, both Lord Shiva's bow and this bow of Lord, of Lord Vishnu were constructed by Vishwakarma. Lord Shiva was given one of the bows to kill Tripura, Tripura Asura. One day, after Lord Shiva killed the demon, the demigods went to Lord Brahma and curiously inquired, Who is more powerful, Lord Shiva or Lord Vishnu? To resolve their doubt, Lord Brahma created, arranged to create some conflict between the two. As a result, a fierce battle ensued. During the fight, Lord Vishnu cut off Lord Shiva's bowstring and then simply by releasing a tumultuous roar, he stunned Lord Shiva's senses. At the behest of the demigods, the fighting was then stopped. Everyone who witnessed the duel concluded that Lord Shiva is superior to Lord sorry, Lord Vishnu is superior to Lord Shiva in all respects. Lord Shiva, however, felt bitter because of his defeat and was insulted by the verdict of the demigods. Thus, in gloom and disgust, he gave this bow, he gave he gave away his bow to Deva Ratha, a king in the line of Ikshvaku. Lord Vishnu gave his bow to the great sage. Richika, who then gave it to his son Jama Dagni. However, my father never used that bow, for he had vowed not to retaliate against any wrong done to him. Thereafter, I received the bow from him, and after killing the Kshatriyas 21 times as a revenge for Karthaviri Arjuna slaying my father, I became the sole ruler of the earth. When Kashyapa performed a great sacrifice so that I could make atonement for killing the Kshatriyas, I gave him the earth as his pleasantry reward and then retired to Mount Mahendra. While there, I acquired great prowess by performing severe austerities. However, when I heard that you had broken the bow of Lord Shiva, I felt compelled to come and challenge you. If you consider yourself a great hero, then take this bow and see if you are worthy of fighting with me. Without speaking, Rama accepted Parasharama's challenge by quickly snatching the bow and arrow from his hands and then took it with his long-acquired ascetic prowess. Then, after effortlessly stringing the bow before the awestruck Parasharama, Rama drew the arrow back to its full length. Rama then declared, Because you are a Brahmana and related to Vishwamitra, I shall not slay you. However, so... So that my taking up this bow, uh, my taking up this arrow may not go in vain, and your challenge may be properly answered, I will use it to destroy the attainment of heaven which you have earned as a result of your penances. 
The demigods and celestial rishis assembled in the sky to witness Ra Rama's shooting of the arrow. Parashurama had already been rendered important by Rama, and all he could do was gaze at the Lord with wide open eyes. Finally, as Rama continued to keep the arrow pulled back to his ear, Parashurama said in a subdued voice, After I gave away the earth to Kashyapa, he ordered me not to reside here again. For this reason, I must leave before night falls. Although my access to heaven has been taken away, I beg you to at least allow me to return to Mount Mahendra so that I may continue my austerities. O Rama, I can now understand that you are Lord Vishnu himself. Thus, I am not ashamed at having met defeat at your hands. Rama silently accepted Parashurama's request and then released the mighty arrow, thus destroying the son of Jamadagni's eligibility for heavenly elevation. Thereafter, Parashurama returned to Mount Mahendra. As soon as he departed, the darkness previously created completely dissipated. From their position in the sky, the demigods glorified Lord Rama with great enthusiasm and showered him with fragrant flowers. Lord Rama then presented the bow of Lord Vishnu to Varuna and the party thus continued on its way. So, here Parashurama is an incarnation of the Supreme Lord, but he is a Shaktya Veshavatar. So, actually here if you notice, Vidwan Gauranga Prabhu doesn't capitalize the H when referring to um, Parashurama because he is Shaktya Vesh. And um, that's, I find that very interesting that here, you know, he doesn't use that. But anyways, the point is that Parashurama, how did he become arrogant? What was the reason for his arrogance at reading all this story? No. Wrong. Why was he, why was he acting the way he acted toward Lord Rama and Dasharatha? Why was he disrespectful? Why was he showing so much? Um, he, got, he got a bow superior to, to, be to the bow given to the Ishwas. No, but why was he unsubmissive? He's a Brahmana. 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 You're great, all thinking too much. It's right here. You are close. He had, acquired so many pious he acquired so many pious credits. It, it, see, the point is that when one becomes extremely pious, naturally it can lead to an unsubmissive attitude. Because one, see, he has been given up. He vowed that he would not return to earth. Right? He is a Brahmana. He vowed to give up his anger. What are you doing as a Brahmana? Because you acquired too much pious credit. And that pious credit has got to his head. And he forgot his duty. He forgot. How could you not be submissive to such a, such a great saintly king as Dasharatha? You may be a Brahmana. But Brahmana still also has to respect the king. And Dasharatha is the ruler of the earth. He is the emperor. He is not just any king. But he is the emperor of the earth. And... It's the duty of any Brahmana, whatever it may be, that you should still show respect to the king because he is Naradeva. He is, you know, of course the king worships, but it doesn't mean that the Brahmanas can act in, an, in, in a disrespectful manner to not even reply to Dasharatha. To not even reply. Not, respect doesn't mean he has to worship Dasharatha's feet. Nobody is asking that. But there are different levels of respect, right? What is that Bhakti Vinod Thakur sings? Sakala Sammana, Korite Shakati, Deho Nata Jata Jata. That one has to respect, even to one's juniors, one has to show some respect. Even to those who are younger, there is some level of respect. Although the respect that is shown to those who are elder, who are senior, who are more advanced is different, still respect is there. And here the son of Jamadagni, Parashurama, is not showing any of these, any of these things. And therefore even the rishis, everybody is, 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 is worried. I was like, why? What are you doing? You know? And Dasharatha is reminding him of his vow. And he just ignores. He just ignores Dasharatha. And he speaks to Rama like this. So therefore, in the process of surrender, Supreme Lord, what is that verse? Um, famous verse that uh, Krishna says, for those, um, I take up, Aham, Darish, uh, um, huh? Yasya Aham Anu Grihnami, Harishyeta Dhanam Shanaihi. That he can take away the wealth of a devotee. 
because that devotee is attached to this wealth and because of becoming attached to that wealth he has developed an unsubmissive he developed a favorable unfavorable attitude towards devotional service so krishna takes the wealth away why yasyaham anugrihnami to show anugraha to show that to show his compassion upon that upon that 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 um, devotee so parashurama shaktyavesh avatar is you know is shaktyavesh avatar means that uh, that living entity is also a devotee of the supreme lord so um in 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 this particular case what what it means is that as a devotee somehow or the other he developed an unsubmissive attitude because of the wealth of pious credits so rama takes it away from him and it's done a little it's, and and when it's done it's done it's a little painful you know parashurama had to be humiliated he was humiliated in front of everybody but as a devotee parashurama didn't he 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 accepted that he said i am not afraid. i'm not i'm not shy to be defeated by you of course ultimately this is all lord's arrangement so that parashurama declares that lord ramachandra is vishnu himself so that happens but while analyzing the aspect of surrender um here because parashurama seems to have become attached or somehow become unfavorable because of those pious credits it would prevent him from attaining liberation and therefore supreme lord takes it away so um i'll stop there um is there any questions or comments hari krishna yes just one this one small comment but <coughs> when you were, i mean when you were talking about um vibhishana i thought that was right that's right really amazing actually this with this comment with hanuman oh it's ecstatic like, like yeah. to hear more about that for sure but i was thinking also too that there's a similar case like with bali maharaj the bali maharaj similarly fought with the devatas and things like that and i mean his i'm sure there's like some differences it's there differences that you know he kind of <laughs> knew about it but he was still kind of doing it yeah know? but it's just it's kind of like that same thing that bali maharaj was fighting with the, with the you know devatas and things and in the heart fire. he wanted to surrender but yeah. Yeah. yeah and then also too it's um that bali maharaj at least my understanding is that he had this good association with pallad maharaj yeah, yeah, yeah. also Yeah like that so anyway just a small comment Yeah Jai thank you Mahat Sir Prabhu and um and Guru Maharaj yeah he told us about you know the this different incident incidents from the Puranas of actually how Bali Maharaj you know he's with Prahlad Maharaj and you know Prahlad Maharaj is glorifying Lord Vishnu and you know he he has wish problem is like is vishnu really that powerful just look look at all the rakshasas in my army look at me look at all these. is he really that powerful and problem is gets really upset and curses him you know that you know you are going to lose all your entire kingdom and witness the prowess of vishnu <laughs> you know and then and 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 you know so it's a, you know so so then bali marsh gets like you know how are both these things going to happen you know like i lose all my kingdom yeah. how will how will say so anyway my words don't prove false lord vishnu will take care of it and then he sees mm. the promise and he gave the class downstairs so it was probably last year two years ago two years ago wow mm. time flies and um anyway one thing is you know uh, in when we were looking at the commentary it's the sages served lord rama by their speech mm. if you read the uttarakhand most of it is actually rama inquiring from sages Mm. So usually when when it from what i've understood is that when it says that the sages served lord Ra- served by their speech which means they that means they drowned the the kshatriyas with hari katha mm. nice. wherever like you know we can even see all, all the kings you know like they, they all even even must in the bhagavatam must be even in the bhagavatam we see yudhishthira maharaj you know is inquiring from narada muni about jaya and vijaya dhomia to the pandavas dhomia. Okay, I don't want to quote the Mahabharat now, but <laughs> but you know that you can quote. <laughs> you can quote. Right? So even in the Mahabharat, that's what they do. <laughs> you know, so so much, so much. You know, and um, you know, um, then another thing also is that Ravana not only he saw the prowess of Hanuman, but he was defeated by Vali, Ravana. Yeah. You know, so like when Sugriva came and did it to him, it was just another reminder that hey, I'm Vali's brother. Yeah. You know, you can. and another thing you know is that when lord rama appeared 
in an, in, when he was in the court of Dasharatha, all these sages would actually come and they took up places in, 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 in Dasharatha's court. You know? And what was their only thing? They just wanted to see Lord Rama when he appeared in the court. And they would see Lord Rama appear in the court, the look at him the whole time. The rest of the time they're sitting and doing their sadhana. Meditate. One is like facing the wall, one is like doing his own thing. Like, you know, imagine, you know, just like doing your own sadhana in the middle of, in the royal assembly. And just the whole time, just the only thing you wanted to see Lord Rama. And when Lord Rama got exiled, then they all left. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, yeah, that was, I, thought, I thought that was, you know, really amazing. And um, this, this other thing too that you... Anyways, yeah. What are you saying? It's kind of funny because there is people like Dasaratha who are rendering service. But different devotees are in different stages of Krishna consciousness. Yeah. And the rishis, they could be rendering service to Lord Rama. But, uh, you know, they choose to just see him in Shantarasa, like almost. Mm. You know? Again, different devotees are in different rasas, relationships and things. But it's very interesting, I felt. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, and another point. But anyways, I, I was on, related to one of your previous things. What, what is it? I don't remember. Wow. <laughs> and uh, you know that's why we can see sometimes that uh, you know big big qualifications can also be an impediment. You know, like okay, you're a great rishi and all this. So you may you cannot probably serve Lord Rama like the way Dashrath Swami. Mm. You know, like you could be a Brahmana in Vrindavan. And that's a very high thing. But, uh, you know, it's like very... Krishna's friends are all Vaishyas. You know, they're not like some high born... There's one Brahmana. Oh, Madhu Mangala friend. we know. Ma yeah, Madhu Mangala, of course. But usually... If you're a young boy, then you probably young, could yeah. associate you with You could anybody. do whatever, you know. Yeah. And I guess so, so people usually want like the, the best birth and the best... But, that, you know, what we really want is a, a birth that we can render unalloyed service to the Supreme Lord. Mm. Like know? Bhakti Vinod Thakur prays. You know, Even grass. A, yeah. Even if I'm an insect in the house of a devotee, and um, and one 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 more thing in in regards to the Sharanagati, this this thing that Krishna when 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 a person you know yes you know it may seem like Sugriva approached Ravan, Rama for uh, some kind of benefit you know but in the Chaitanya Charitamrita uh, um, Krishna as Kaviraj Goswami reveals the mind of the Lord that when he someone approaches the Supreme Lord for something. He gives it to them in such a way that they never ask for such a thing again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then it, he reveals the mind of the Lord thinking that, you know, this person is a fool wanting material enjoyment, but am I such a fool mm. who wants material enjoyment? Or who, who's going to give him material enjoyment? No, instead I'll force him to drink the nectar I'm of my lotus feet. feet. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's exactly what the Supreme Lord did disagree yeah. with too. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. Chandan had something, but he left it. Yeah, this is part of the sadhana. Hare Krishna. So uh, you were I making the point. To receive questions from yeah, yeah, you were making the point that um, that Vipishana was like most likely like uh, you know like kind of like fighting on the side of like Ravana and everything. In the Uttarakhanda, um, it, that whole story is like actually described of like how like Ravana like got up to the position and like I think it's like pretty abridged in that book. But what is there is that. Um, Vipishana was also performing austerities with Ravana for like thousands of years and he was like standing on one foot and then whenever Brahma like came um, to like offer benedictions to them Ravana asked for the boon of like not being killed by any of these beings but Vipishana asked for the boon of always being um, like fixed in righteousness and like at the greatest times of like adversity like always be like um, you know like fulfilling his like duty and everything like that so he was inclined to dharma mm -hmm. yeah yeah um, so that was just like a comment, but I had one question. Um, so Vibhishana is a Chiranjeeva, Jeevi, Chiranjeevi? Vibhishana is a Chiranjeevi? Uh, must have been said in the Ram, I don't remember, yeah. Oh, okay, I was going to ask, do you know how he attained that status? How he attained Chiranjeevi? Maybe, maybe when we read the full version of the Ramayana, you know. I mean, as I'm reading this, I'm understanding why this is abridged. There's mm. so much more in, 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 in the full version. Yeah, so that's much that's more. That's huh? That's Which one? There's this one? A million ways yeah. <laughs> Chiran GV means they live forever. They live to the end of the universe, yeah. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Bhishma Dev died, bro. No, I'm like, Okay, anyways. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Anyways, I'm really, anyways, I've, I've always been really, very uh, much, uh, not the proper word, but inspired by Vibhishana. But also, it's, I just looked a little bit in there, but it's mentioned too that when Kumbhakarna, he went out and he was eating rishis that Vibhishana was studying the Vedas. Oh. But it's also mentioned that like he was pious at birth. So it'd be interesting to, to hear, anyways, it's probably in that, that Mula I, Ramayana, but <laughs> like how much Vibhishana was like, in her, like how, how much of a role he played. Because what you're saying was, I, I never thought of it like that, that Lord um, Ravana wouldn't have uh, kept him close to him if he wasn't like useful. Otherwise, it's like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, yeah. you know, he, 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 uh, he's, he's being called a traitor. Yeah. But that means he wasn't a traitor before. Yeah. You know, that means he was assisting Ravana. He might have been, <clears throat> he might have been, you know, it, it seems like from what we are hearing, what Matsya Prabhu said and things like that, that definitely he was more pious natured and he probably avoided um, directly performing several of the heinous activities and things like that. But, uh, you know, he was, he was Ravana's close associate, dear brother, you know, yeah. You know, it, it says that Vibhishana is Ravana's half brother. Half brother, yeah. You know, so and we can also see that you know, it, they, you know, it he may have been associating with Ravana, but just like Vidura is associating with Dhritarashtra hmm. and all these people, you know, Vidura of course are very must be a very useful person. But it, it can be that you just you know Vibhishana has always been a saint and probably not you know engaged in heinous activities with Ravana. Like Vidura didn't engage. No, no, that's what know. he's saying. He's of so. pious birth and things like that. However, mm. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur reveals that his devotional inclination seems to have sprung up because of association of Hanuma, mm. which is why even in this cardinal teachings of uh, Ramayana, Hanuman is is compared to the spiritual master. Now that through his association, many, many, many attained um, Lord Rama's lotus feet. So. Is it possible that, um, Mike? Is it possible, also a byproduct, of him having like some kind of connection with Lord Brahma as well? Who? Vibhishana, yeah, it's having Half a connection with Brahma. Means, yeah, definitely, some connection is there. You know, you are also connected to Lord yeah, Brahma. Sir. Just, um, just um, yeah, we a long are. Time I guess, later. I guess we all are connected. So. Yes, we are, sir. That's our. So. That's the end of us on today, I guess. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Anything? There's a, there's a pastime mentioned during the class of uh, Vishnu defeating Lord Shiva. Yeah. So it's not the pastime found in the Krishna book. What is this pastime? Where is it? So this is this is described. It it's, it seems in the Balakanda. Exactly. You read it. You probably must have read it. It, it, so I haven't got to that section yet, but um, um, you know, but Brahma instigates some battle. Do you know? Do you know the full story? It, it sounds like you said. I don't know the full, that, that Brahma uh, yeah. Something that they get to fight. So yeah, Brahma instigates because they they the demigods want to know who's supreme. So Brahma instigates a battle between Shiva and Vishnu, and then they fight, and that's what happens. I mean, many men. Actually, the Puranas are full of stories of, of, of fighting with demigods and, you know, and things like this and all kinds of like, you know, um, pretty gruesome battles. And, uh, you know, Vishnu also plays his, he's, 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 he's also, he also has a place up there, you know, so he's, you know, he's part of the celestial opulence up there. And so he plays his role and plays his part and, you know. Adds, adds his bit, you know, to the whole thing, although he's ultimately the one who's doing everything. But, yeah. I was wondering if you had any inf information on why Vibhishana was favorable to Hanuman, like if you know, he was... Um, on the only thing I can speculate is his pious credits, that he was pious in nature 
and that um, you know when one is um, piously inclined, it, it is likely that they will be appreciative of devotees. It's not a guarantee, but it's likely because devotees will exhibit several of the qualities that they themselves are inclined towards. And through those qualities, they become favorable to the devotees and then they accept what the devotees say. So, but Hadn't he been helping Ravana like, do all these horrible things? Like, where is his piety coming from if he's helping with all this? Yeah, that'd be crazy. Huh? How he can do all that? He's helping Ravana, right? Like, well, we don't see again. He didn't. He it, there's no there's no history of him torturing the rishis or things like that. Uh, but as 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 a minister of a king, and the king is conquering over the demigods, he assists them and you know defeats the demigods. He must have defeated several of the primary demigods himself, because he's one of the principal, you know, warriors there. He must have himself subdued. Indrajit is known to subdue Indra. But there are others. Other demigods are there who are all extremely powerful. And Vibhishana might have been, you know, one of these people subduing some of the principal demigods. But it's, it's, it's part of his duty as, 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 the, as, 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 the, as a close associate of a king to participate in the battle with Ravana. But when he becomes a devotee, he doesn't give any of those considerations any, any, any importance anymore. So then he gives up that association. That's what Sarva Dharma and Parityajya Maam Ekam Saranam Braja. He gives up all those varieties of Dharma. Previously he was Dharmic in the sense that he was assisting Ravana. So that's where his piety comes from. You know, it, we, could, we could philosophically speculate in this regard that when he stopped Ravana from trying to kill Hanuman, that could be Ajnata Sukriti. Yes, 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 to, yes. to talk in favor of Hanuman in Ravana's court yes. is Ajnata Sukriti. Yes. And that's his starting of devotional yeah. service, if we were to look at it from that that's point of view. That's also a very good point there. In, that, um, you know, because he, is, he, he likes righteousness and things like that, he didn't want the messenger to be mistreated because that is a very, very sinful thing. Duryodhana also wanted to do that to Krishna. You know, you cannot, you cannot mistreat the messenger. The messenger is simply conveying a message. You don't like the message, you don't kill the minister. You Sorry, the messenger. Yeah. So that could have, yeah, so he rendered Vaishnav Seva like this. Very good point. Yeah. You know, he also, you know, he also tells him, you know, like, he also advises him against Sita. You know, it's like, why are you doing this? You know, just give her back. Right. You know, so, so this is all devotional service. Yes. And if we read the Ramayana, we see that, uh, Ravana gave Vibhishana's wife the service of, of uh, you know, being Sita's friend. So being favorable to Sita and Vibhishana associated with his wife. That's also So that's good. also there. Mm -hmm. You know, so it seems like this is all Ajnata Sukriti, which sprouted into pure devotional service. Yeah. Still it seems that Hanuman has played a central role. Yeah, definitely. Because definitely. Our, because yeah. Chakra, Thakur, definitely. So. Yeah. I mean, because I think that... That, that may have been like beginning of his, you know, like, wow, okay, you know, direct devotional it service. It could have been, yeah. Because he intercedes Ravana, you know. It could have He been. protect, you know, tried to protect, yeah. you know. What's it, bro? So, uh, Maricha, who was like another minister of Ravana, was also like um, arguing, like telling him, like, this is wrong, like, you yes. shouldn't do this. But yes. he, seeing it as his dharma to like, you know, just surrender to Ravana and just do what he Sir wants Ravana. anyways. He d goes and becomes the deer and everything like that. But, of course, Vibhishana just, like, left. And he was called a traitor for that, which kind of, like, implies that in the past he might have done things like that for Ravana. He might have had a difference of, of opinion, but seeing it as his duty as being, like, a yes. minister, he would have, like, yes, done good something point. like that. Good point. What Maricha did was wrong. He, you know, he knew Rama's supreme personality of Godhead. In fact, he says the, that famous verse, um, Rama Vigraha, Vigrahavan Dharmaha, that Rama is the very embodiment of Dharma, that was stated by Maricha to, um, to Ravana. But uh, Maricha is not a devotee because he never surrendered unto Rama. But he was very Rama conscious. But he didn't surrender because he didn't give a bad association. Okay. Um, Madhuji's.
Um, I apologize. I don't remember exactly the story or past time that led up to this question, but um, you mentioned um, to obtain the Lord, one has to consult his consort, and she will negotiate for the conditions living entity. Um, and, of course, um, the Supreme Lord's consort is more, I remember she's more compassionate Correct. To, than the Lord um, Correct. himself. So I just want to clarify, why is it that when certain devotees, of course, they worship, you know, her as, as, as like more than the Supreme Lord, I would say. Like, like say for instance, for Sri Radharani, a lot of, I've noticed that devotees will, you know, praise her, but then, you know, the worship of, I guess, Krishna isn't, isn't there. So is it, I just want to make sure that, is there a distinction, a distinction or is there like, you know? So we don't worship Radharani without Krishna. Okay. Prabhupada says that, huh? yeah, Prabhupada says that, um, you know, when Radharani is worshipped without Durga, sorry, without uh, um, Krishna, she becomes, she, she, she turns into Durga because she's Maya. Now, she's Yoga Maya when she's, when she's with Krishna. So we always worship Radha Krishna. And for Prabhupada, even in Vrindavan, you know, everybody would say Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. You know, Prabhupada would reply always back, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Because it's Hare Krishna. So the Hare refers to Radharani and she must always be associated with Krishna. Why? Because that's what gives her pleasure. Our purpose, our parampara is to give pleasure to Srimati Radharani. She, she finds pleasure only when she is spoken of in relation to Krishna. Not individually worshipped or glorified. Um, so, uh, that, therefore, and so much more can be said about this. But, but the point is that we worship Srimati Radharani by following her mood in serving Krishna. But following her, worshipping her means following her mood, following her instructions, you know. And she instructs to worship Krishna. She will never instruct to worship herself. So we worship Krishna, but we do so understanding that this is the mercy of Srimati Radharani. So this is the important point. I have, I have one more. Um, the part where the the bird or hawk, I can't remember, got his eye plucked out, and you were saying that that was um, to rectify the offenses that he's made in the past. Um, so then my other question is, I've, and then I also heard that, you know, with Vaishnava Parad, like when we can rate, you know, these offenses, and then I don't know if there's a way that you can come back from that, but then also he was, you know, rectified for that. So I'm a little confused Because on that. he has forgiveness. Okay. Because he has forgiveness for his offense. But in order to make sure that he doesn't do such an offense again, he gets a little reaction so that he suffers a little bit. So he's taught a little bit of a lesson. You know, um, so that's the reason why. But he asks forgiveness for his offense. He comes and falls at the feet of Sita and Rama. Sita is whom he offended. He falls at her feet. And so in that way, he seeks forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So there is coming back from Vaishnava Parad, but that coming back means one has to seek forgiveness from the feet of the Vaishnava that one has offended. Okay. All right. Hare Krishna. Shri Valmiki Ramayan ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. What time is Shri? No, no, you need.